The book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon, and I'm going to give you three lessons in this video today that I took from recently going over the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's go. What's up guys, Mark Cassara here. In this video, we're gonna talk about three lessons I've learned from reading the, bl the book of Ecclesiastes. This is the book of wisdom from the wisest king that has ever lived the face of the earth. The book of Ecclesiastes was attributed to King Solomon. It's a part of the Old Testament. It's a reflective and philosophical work that explores the meaning of life. Have you ever asked yourself, what is the meaning of life? I encourage you to read the book of Ecclesiastes because it will start to unpack and talk about the meaning of life. It talks about the pursuit of wisdom, the futility of man's achievements and endeavors. And the book is written in the form of a series of reflections and observations from King Solomon. So the first lesson that I learned from this book, and there are many lessons, is embrace the seasons of life. Found in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 verse 8, it talks and highlights about this idea of seasons, that life goes in seasons, including seasons to weep and seasons to laugh, time to mourn, and a time to dance. The lesson encourages us to accept the ups and downs of life. See, in, in success, we're not always going to have a happy-go-lucky, full-time joy, you know, uh, journey. Our journey is going to be filled with peaks and valleys. And it's important to understand that these are seasons in life. And just as the moon and the sun go through these different cycles, so do these seasons in life. We have summer, we have fall, we have winter, we have spring. And that's a lot of times what happens in our life, in our journey to success. We have these ups, these downs, we go sideways, we go left, right. But the importance is, the important key here is to understand these seasons and what Paul says in the, in the New Testament, to be content in every season that you're going through. The second lesson is the lesson of valuing wisdom and knowledge. The Bible talks a lot about wisdom. It talks about wisdom becoming that person who you need to seek after. In Ecclesiastes 7, 12, it says that wisdom is a shelter as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. You see, success often comes from making the right decisions, learning from our experiences, and applying wisdom from from those choices that you made. I always look at wisdom as somebody you should keep close to you. Somebody who you should be, always be reaching out to. Wisdom's like a mentor. You want wisdom by your side in every situation that you go through. You know, Solomon asked for wisdom over riches. And God gave him wisdom and then riches followed. So I think there's an important lesson to be learned there. If we seek wisdom, we seek wisdom from the Lord. We seek wisdom from wise counsel. People have been through the struggles, have been through the successes, have been through this journey that we want to achieve. We're going to take on wisdom. We're going to learn from wisdom. And then the rest is going to come and then each puzzle piece is going to finally fall into place. So many times we try to do it on our own. We just want to kind of, we just want to wing it. We just want to run after it. Some some of these A-type personalities, we want to go, 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 go. And we, we kind of turn a blind eye to wisdom. There could be wisdom in many different places. You can find wisdom on YouTube. You can find wisdom from watching a video. Lately, I've been watching Myron Golden and he is, he is so wise in what he's been through in life. His ups and downs, his successes and failures, I'm gaining wisdom from him. So he may never know me, I may never know him, but he is sowing seeds into my life and, and allowing wisdom to come into me. I'm taking that wisdom and then I'm helping, I'm helping my life by making the right decisions according to the wisdom that I learned. You can get wisdom from books, you can get wisdom from people. You can get wisdom from events that you tend. You can get wisdom from your local church and pastor. You can get wisdom from your mentors or your business coaches. You can even get wisdom from friends because there's moments where God can download a word into that person's heart or spirit and then they can talk to you and it's full of wisdom. And in that moment, you'll be able to make some right decisions. And number three, prioritizing relationships and community. 
A lot of times as entrepreneurs, we're more like solopreneurs. We want to try to do it on our own. We try to fulfill all these different hats. We try to be the number one. We try to be the master of everything, right? Really what we're, what we're doing is we're the jack of all trades, but the master of none. And I know there's more to that saying, but we try to take on so much. And sometimes we just you know, we're going 100 miles an hour that we, we don't wait for people to come with us. We don't wait for people to join us and link arms with us. And the Bible also talks a lot about linking arms with people. It always many, many different references that two are always better than one. Here's one now. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help him up. The lesson here highlights the significance of community building. You see, you can go fast alone, but you can go far when you're with a community. Invest in your relationships, invest in your relationships, build a network around you, and keep people that are gonna bring value to your life rather than take from you. It's important to have the right community around you. You don't want people that are gonna just be uh, energy energy vampires. There's a good book called The Energy Bus. I highly encourage you to read it. It talks about people that are energy vampires. They suck the life out of you. You don't want those people around you. You want the people that are gonna add value to you. Now, you're not looking for relationships just so you can get, but you want relationships where there's, there's reciprocation that happens. It's it's actually called an oily relationship. And I'll actually probably do a whole nother video about an about oily relationships in your life. There's something to that because you can have relationships that are oily and smooth or you can have relationships that are rigid and cause a lot of friction. So it's important to have the right community around you where you're adding value, they're adding value back to you. So these are just three lessons that I've learned while looking in the book of Ecclesiastes. And again, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon, who was the wisest king that the world has ever known and the richest, wealthiest king. And he did one thing. He asked God for wisdom more than riches. When God gave him wisdom, the riches came. So your job today, my friend, is to ask God for wisdom wisdom. Type wisdom down in the comments. Let me know you watched this video. Give me some of your feedback. Click the thumbs up button. Click the subscribe button. Share this video with a friend. And until the next one, make sure you live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you. We'll see you guys later.